Julia Bond has had a fantastic amateur bowling career, a junior gold championship, an NCAA title. The question is, can she add a professional win to her already impressive resume? Find out next from Orlando, Florida. From the city beautiful Orlando, Florida, it is time for women's professional bowling. Boardwalk Ball hosts the 2019 Go Bowling PWBA Regional Showdown. Four bowlers compete for the showdown win and prize money. We have a semifinal bowling to start the show. Second seeded Jasmine Mason will take on the third seed Elise Bolton. Both were national champs at Nebraska. Then the top seed Julia Bond, another former Husker, takes on fourth seeded Kayla Bandy. She's the head coach at Maryland Eastern Shore. The winners bowl in a two game total pinfall match for the victory. Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Professional Women's Bowling on CBS Sports Network from Orlando. Dave Ryan alongside Kelly Kulik, USBC Hall of Famer, joined by Stephanie Johnson, major champion throughout our broadcast as well. And Kelly, the question bowling fans have is, what does this regional program mean to the PWBA? Well, Dave, that's a great question. The regional program is the feeding ground for the future of the PWBA Tour. And what it is, if you go back, you have the Pepsi Youth Championships. From there, you develop kids from the Junior Gold Program at USBC. There, the young ladies go into the collegiate program in all those universities. When they graduate, they come out on tour and they bowl against the top bowlers in the nation. They also have the opportunity to bowl against us on a PWA tour stop and then in the regional program as well. So it's a feeding ground for the future stars out here, Dave. Julia Bond, a tremendous bowler, the number one seed here, former star at Nebraska. She is a bowler to watch, two-time regional champ already in 2019. Seeds two and three meet first. We'll start bowling next from Orlando on CBS Sports Network. For women's regional bowling on CBS Sports Network, Kelly, let's check the future for the sport. Oil conditions today. Now, all the regional program ladies have bowled on sport compliant patterns. As you can see here, up until about an hour ago of practice session, they have not seen this 38 feet, medium volume. You can see the darker blue in this section means there's more reverse oil. The ladies can play the track area, but with the history and DNA in the center, is it has a tendency to get a little loose back here. So watch the ladies start to migrate left, but yet keep tighter angles towards the pocket. Uh, JJ, John Januitz to the lanes from our Kegel company this weekend. He said, look to see moderate scores throughout the competition. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our number three seed from Merritt Island, Florida, Elise Bolton. <laughs> Hometown hero. Merritt Island is about an hour drive from here in Brevard County, right between the Indian Banana Rivers and the Atlantic Ocean. Beautiful country. I imagine they have nice beaches. Ah, fantastic. Go on, Brooklyn. She'll take off 10 back. And sometimes you just get lucky, she'll take the strike. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our number two seed from Cranston, Rhode Island, Gigi Mason. Jasmine Gigi Mason, another former Nebraska star. And it would be difficult to find a bowler or a professional athlete in any sport with more personality. <laughs> I mean, she is fun to talk to. She is very animated, very energetic, and wait till you watch her throw the bowling ball. Gigi. Six stand up. The success of these ladies getting here, not only just in the regional program itself, but also throughout the, the PWA tour itself in both regions, first starting off in the Midwest and on the West Coast, and then chasing it back here in the elite field. Julia Bond was part of that elite field. Twelve time tour champ, Shannon O'Keefe. Front row seat. 6-10, what a chop on the 10, and the 6 stands early open for Jasmine, or Gigi, as she prefers to be called. From Cranston, Rhode Island, now living in Providence. Early on, she was into tapping jazz dancing. About 10 years old, she just tried bowling. Some friends introduced her to the sport, and she loved it. Really hasn't looked back. Fantastic young star. Yes. 
Great shot by Gigi. Packs all 10 straight back. Yeah, Gigi was a rookie out on tour this year, along with Julia Bond. At least Bolt had bowled in the past, so is Kayla Bandy. But right now, currently leading the rookie of the year brackets is Valerie Bursier from the Michigan area, Bulls for Team Canada. But again, Julia Bond also a front runner for the rookie of the year. Back to release Bolt. That's way wide a target, a light hit. And a lot up. One, two, eight, nine. Pin still standing. Elise has very unique timing. She's a little bit late with her style. So her foot gets there. Shoulder drops in. Hand wicks out to the right. You can see the ball just miss way right. We said the pattern's about 38 feet. So rule, the guide by the rule of 31, break point somewhere around seven. But typically, as we see with the heavier volumes of oil, it tends to migrate towards that indicator board 10. Great look, pin deck. And the approach. Lots to cover, does a nice job with a spare. You might see on the back of her jersey, she has Blanche, that's her given name. And Elise is her middle name. She goes by Elise more often, but correct pronunciation, Blanche. Gotta get that right. Four step approach over 15 at the arrows, 9 10 at the break point, makes the 1 2 8 9. Nice cover. Journalism major at Nebraska. Got here by virtue of winning the 2019 Greater Cleveland Regional title. Here going for a showdown win, crossing over and leaving a six pin. Nearly another Brooklyn strike. Yeah, I, I don't think Elise really got comfortable during the practice session. Again, the ladies just saw this pattern for the first time about an hour and a half prior to the taping of the telecast getting to this position. You can see the ball hit very high on the head pin, three pin in front of the six pin, kick out the 10. So their adjustments, the equipment that they brought here that they're using, have to make some type of a surface adjustments in order to get lined up. Could see a ball change possibly, or she just could get more comfortable as the time goes on. Takes care of the mark for the six pin. Heavy Nebraska flavor in this show. Three of the bowlers won national championships at Nebraska. Including Gigi Mason. Nebraska was her fifth and final visit on the recruiting tour. Almost didn't go, was tired of the trips and the travel. And her dad said, honor your commitment to go see Lincoln. A little high. And the 3610 up. And she said, Well, we landed in Orlando, and you know that drive to Lincoln. <laughs> I mean, it's not a lot of cornfields happening, not a lot there between the two towns. But once she got to Lincoln, saw the football stadium and the athletic complex, she was sold the second she arrived on campus and said, I want to be a Cornhusker. Yeah, I have to say, every time the Ladies Tour has visited Lincoln, Nebraska, and bowled at Sun Valley Lane's John Lacido Center, it's the atmosphere to see the football field from a distance, what, probably one of the highest right next to it. Yeah, it's so yes, cool. seating stadiums there is. I, I can't imagine what a, a Saturday in that football stadium feels like. Another open, though, for Gigi here, Kel. I like Gigi's style because she really chases after the swing. And watch what I mean here. It's like slides, takes that big step, gets the ball in the swing really quick. So her body tilt is already going in this direction. Eyes are going this way, her torso's forward going that way. She really chases the ball quickly with her feet. Light hit again. Yeah, finding some over under. Left lane hooked. She struck last time on that lane, but she's really finding inconsistencies. Lots to cover here, one, two, eight, ten. Gigi said when she got to Nebraska, her coaches did a total overall on her backswing, on the approach. Just about everything she'd been doing in high school was changed. <laughs> and she was nowhere near the top five in the Baker bowling team. Lots to cover here. Cross lane kicks out the 10 pin for a big mark. What the bling? <laughs> <laughs> big shot. Do you think that you guys need to be a little? Watch this. Head pin to the left. Off the sidewall again. I want to believe here. Maybe. Possibly. But the pins, sometimes they bounce really well. Other times they do not. Much better shot. A 
Elise Bolton crunches 10 down into the pit. Let's hear from Stephanie Johnson. Yeah, guys, I did speak with the reps uh, before the match started. They highlighted, of course, there's going to be some nerves between these girls. You know, this is a, a new experience to them, and they really just need to focus on the process and to keep their emotions in check if they want to come away with a win today. Well, Steph, emotions. All four bowlers talked to us about that pre-show, what it's going to be like. A touch high, no worries. Four pin trip late. And another strike for Blanche. And she's got a double and a big lead here, Kel. So far, yes, Jasmine had those two open spares, both in the first and third frame. Jasmine has a higher rev rate. She rotates the ball much more than Elise does. Therefore, her angles are larger. She has to find a way to control the pocket. A lot. Yes! Jasmine opening match, she's sliding 33, 21 at the arrows, 7, 8 at about 44 to 45 feet. Trips a two pin forward. Ball starting to deflect slightly though, so could be in the right part of the lane, just might need a different ball. But the other ladies are much more straighter than Jasmine is. Looks for a double. Cut it to 22, liked it. Four pin up. Great camera angle there for the pin action. Ball just high on the head pin. Two pin goes right around the four pin to leave it standing by itself. Looking for the four, looking for a spare. A spare. She'll get that. And our showdown is underway here in Orlando on CBS Sports Network. First semifinal, halfway home. More bowling coming up next. Our Bowl TV highlight of the week showcases how the finalists got here. Julia Bond won two regional events, winning at Sun Valley Lanes in Lincoln, Nebraska, following it up with a victory over Stephanie Schwartz at the Sonoma County Regional. Elise Bolton took home the title at the PWBA Greater Cleveland Regional. And Gigi Mason defeated Brandy Branca at the East Hartford Regional 200 to 197. Caleb Brandy Bandy earned the fourth spot by some other great bowlers. Josie Barnes doing our stats today. Head coach of Vanderbilt. Shannon O'Keefe, 12-time champ, who won here recently in Orlando. Head coach at McKendry. Pretty cool to see that. 32 pin lead. Midway point, first semifinal here from Boardwalk Bowl. Crossing over and the six pin nudge, but still stands. Elise looks like she's really struggling with her footing. Four step approach, but she gets the ball in the swing just a little bit later. Shoulder pulls down from the top of the swing, misses inside of her target. Six pin, no problem. Single pin spare conversion. Are you looking for some great PWBA gear? Visit the official online store of the PWBA at shoppwba.com. Bowl fearless, Kim. Hashtag bowl fearless. And bowl warm. Those jumpers or hoodies are very comfortable to wear, by the way. It has been cold at Richmond the last couple of years, by the way. The road to Richmond, our final event of the 2019 PWBA Tour on CBS Sports Network. Little restart here for Elise. Big lead. Had a chance for a turkey. So works on the spare. Seventh frame. It's a good shot. Yes, it is. 
She bags 10 pins straight back. Gigi Mason coming up in the seventh frame. She's down by 31 pins. Playing much further left to right. Let's hope she's comfortable and get locked in here. Tries to catch her opponent, Elise Bolton, in the seventh frame. Business administration major at Nebraska and an IT minor. She has her own company. You can see the logo there. Gigi got game. She does. Pretty cool. There's a lot of motivational speaking with groups all across the Northeast. Yes! She gets a trip, gets a strike. And it's something she hopes to really grow to transcend all sports, not just bowling. She spoke to a wrestling team recently about motivation. Gigi is phenomenal. It's just pure athleticism in each delivery. Again, gets the ball in the swing fast, chases it with her feet, holds and maintains her balance. She has a little bit bent elbow at the release for her to get that increased rev rate. And she's got a great hairstyle. Stats so far, Gigi a couple of opens really hurt her cause. To cut it to 21. Come on. Yes. Gets it and gets it. Big strike for Gigi Mason. Now, this was a very serious junior tennis player, she told us growing up. Dad played football and baseball at Miami. As you see the win probability. But it rains every day here, right, this time of year? It does. And during some of her tennis practices, she couldn't get in the court. So she turned to bowling. That's got really her light hit and the one-two stand. And fell in love with the sport. She was about 11 years old. She went from a touring regional tennis champion who had a personal coach and everything to a bowling. Pretty cool. Five-step approach. Couldn't even at the foul line. Really just way off target. As her mark. Gigi has a shot. She's looking in the ninth frame, the foundation frame for a turkey. Get right back in this match down the stretch run. Yeah, Dave, and Gigi's going to finish the match first. So, Elise, if any pressure comes to her, it will be in the 10th frame on the right lane where she's really struggled the most on. Left lane, Elise. That right, comes in high. 3-6-10 right down the line, still up for her. Just can't find the pocket consistently. No, she's in the middle part of the lane. Later on, when we take a look at the future for the sport lane pattern, again, you'll see it's just a little bit flatter towards the end of the pattern. There's no miss left. So my thought process would be take something a little bit weaker, which she is, get back to the right towards the track area. Gigi, higher rev rate. We'll see what happens when the other two girls step up on the lanes. I think the mindset is to move back to the right and just try to keep the angles a little bit tighter in front of you. To cover, takes care of business. But the lead shrinks to 18. And Gigi can cut it to eight here in the ninth. With a strike. She's found the pocket. Dad George, mom Danielle. Gigi calls her best friends. Hashtag Mason Gang, an only child, and she has her full support. So excited to be here. Big shot. Needs it. Gets it. Interesting, Dave, how it's starting to unravel. 217 max score for Gigi. Look right here, loses the footing a little bit. 19-20, 7 8 at the break point. Probability still is in Elise's favor. However, Gigi working on that three-bagger. Two strikes and nine pins, and she can shut Elise Bolton out and wait to see what opponent she may face. Read it. Yes. Yes, it hurt her. Kicked out. 
And there's the first strike she needed. She just released really is similar to today's modern game. You'll see very similar to some of the professional men bowlers, uh, Jordan Richard, Verity Crawley, Daria Pioke. She's got really great acceleration, a lot of rev rate, generates so much power from the use of her legs. Strike a nine. Required for the win. Good shot. Yes. Oh, it's Kelly Kulik. And now nine. That's all GG needs for the win. After missing two spares early on in the match, Dave, two makeable spares. The 610 chops 3610. And now she has a chance for nine pins and she will advance to the final best of two game match. Needs nine. Has ten. And Gigi Mason has a win. Impressive, Kelly. Some early open frames overcomes those for the victory. Yeah, she's sliding so deep. 20, 6, 7, light swisher hit. Head pin off the sidewall and it's back into 2, 4, 7. Two open spares. Strike, spare, and then she throws the last six in a row to win. She's on TV. <laughs> Pretty happy about it. She's going to the final, looking for the win here today. Get there. Yes! Jasmine Gigi Mason, the two seed, the rookie from Cranston, Rhode Island, knocks off Elise Bolton of Merrick Island, Florida. More bowling. Bond Bandy next. Gigi Mason rallies. Little celebration. She's pretty happy. 217, 214 winner over Elise Bolton, overcoming two early open frames. An extremely successful amateur and collegiate career has certainly brought Julia Bond some notoriety, but nothing could have prepared her for how tough it is out on tours. We find out in this week's Bowl Fearless segment. Those regional wins um, help me with my confidence because it's teaching me how to win, essentially, which is something that I think I, I really, really needed. Again, I was nervous, you know, coming into the season, being a rookie, and kind of wondering how I would measure up to all the other uh, ladies. And so bowling in these regionals really gave me the opportunity to kind of like step into my own and show myself that I can make shots and I could, you know, potentially win a title. That's like the purpose of the regionals is to kind of instill players with a little bit more confidence. Bull Fearless has helped me become a better adult off the lanes by just instilling that independence. Um, you know, I'm an only child. My parents have helped me a lot. And so it's given me the opportunity to kind of go out into the world. And so, and that's helped me, I think, instill that Bull Fearless attitude from those moments on. Julie Bond hopes to continue to bowl fearlessly here in Orlando at Boardwalk Bowl, taking on Kayla Bandy, both former national champs in their collegiate days. Semi-final number two from our PWBA regional showdown comes up next. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our number four seed from Salisbury, Maryland, Kayla Bandy. Head coach at Maryland Eastern Shore, the Hawks. A former national champ at Pikeville as a player. On TV, gets going with a light hit and the one, two, eight. Mm. Standing missed the target. Kayla, somewhere in the similar zone that Gigi was just in, just a touch right of where she was. But again, much more straighter angles through the front. Both style of the ladies in this match are very similar, so the angle should be somewhat similar in controlling that 1-3 pocket. 
Nice job. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our number one seed from Aurora, Illinois, Julia Bond. Aurora, about an hour, Julia tells us, from Chicago, depending on traffic. <laughs> <laughs> it all depends on traffic. Uh, in the windy city. I think there it depends on the time of day. That's right. Two-time regional champ this year. Get started. Across the deck for number 10. Down it goes. Deliver it. Yes, again, Julia just touched further righter than Kayla is. More direct, almost like she's just beaming for that three pin. Sliding 25, 15, 16 at the arrows. Really tight pocket. Julia, due to her ball roll and style, she's able to keep things in front of her. Very similar to Shannon O'Keefe, the way she rolls the ball. Doesn't have to open the lane nearly as much. Messenger 10 pin puts a strike on the board. Oh, almost the rolls a two pin at the four or five falls down. Left lane seems to be hooking a bit more than the right lane. In the running for a possibility of the 2019 PWBA Rookie of the Year. And a top finish at sixth at the Lincoln Open. Two regional titles. Young Star has been excellent this year. On tour. Yeah, I was in the top 24 in the elite field. Really had a great rookie season so far. The two titles she won within the regional program itself and now facing Kayla. And 23 years old. I don't know if I remember 23. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Kelly, you're talking to the wrong guy. A uh, long time ago. Some stats there. Kayla, a high flush strike, and she's chatting a bit. You saw it in the warm-ups when she actually releases the ball at the foul line. I'm not sure I've ever seen that. I, I not too, you know, in, in her opening remarks, she talked about her process and everything, and usually the process happens on the back of the approach before you step up, but watch her lips move. She's saying something to herself as she's bowling. It could be related to her rhythm and her timing, just trying to keep everything synchronized together. Uh, just not something I've witnessed before. Positive reinforcement before I deliver the ball for sure. All right, help it, help, help, help. A lot of help. Lane wants some help one. and leaves a two pin. First time she's been on TV as a player since 2008 when she won the NAIA National Championship at Pikeville. Her teams at UMES have been on the We asked her pre match how that was going to feel. She said, I'm pretty nervous. It's been a while. <laughs> Two-time player of the year. Great collegiate career at Pikeville. Takes care of the mark. She actually went to Pikeville on a volleyball scholarship. So did both, and she said it was tough, especially because I love bowling so much. I really wanted to bowl full-time in college, but volleyball was the full ride. That was paying for school. <laughs> so you got to balance it out. Got to do both. She chose striking over spiking. Ooh. That's, Ooh. that's what it was. I would have rather spiked the ball. Team USA experience, we saw that. Leads it 2-4. Speaking of Team USA, let's go back to Stephanie Johnson. Yeah, so I spoke to the ball reps um, before their match, and both players are experiencing some early hook on the left lane, so they're going with weaker symmetrical balls to try to get the ball through that spot, but I wouldn't be surprised if they maybe go to a ball with a bigger engine that's gonna have a, a sharper response down lane and maybe get through the pins and have a better carry percentage. Thanks for the info, Steph. True to see. Usually the bigger engine makes the ball want to read the middle a little bit more sooner, makes more of that arcing motion. So yeah, where Jasmine was playing, or Gigi was, it could have some influence of the younger ladies now on the TV pair itself. Really, uh, again, John Januitz, JJ, our lane guru from Kegel this week, said the scores could be moderate, maybe 180, 190, maybe possible two team games, but definitely a lower scoring pattern. Push. Yeah. You heard her. 
Bush. That ball is falling directions, and the pins have no chance, Kelly. I can only have a, a guidance system for every ball that I threw. Five-step approach, a lot of twirl rotation, 12-13 at the break point, trips the four pin. Bad break for Kayla Bandy. Good pocket shot. Seven pin stands alone. First time ever in singles show on TV. Not big pulling anymore. And here's the self-talk, Kelly. We, we're getting into a little bit. She is saying something. And we can't hear it because she's just sort of mouthing it. I mean, she has Mike. Seven pin, has that, has the mark. Follow the PWBA on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and on BowlTV.com to keep up with the greatest women bowlers in the world. Get the latest video highlights and news each week to follow your favorites. Plenty on social media about Dasha Kovalova and the 300 game recently in Louisville. And Shannon O'Keefe winning her 12th title. Oh, Stephanie Johnson winning Come on, stay there. a major Sorry. championship. Near split. Could have been much worse for Kayla Bandy. It's really interesting to watch that the right lane and left lane play so differently. Once the ladies keep migrating further in, watch the ball. It's like a suction cup. It's just pulling the ball back to the pocket so quickly that the lane seems to me like it's downhill. It just it turns left, picks up speed, and keeps going to the left. Have to find a way to combat that. Nine spare is still very good. Not my best. Oh, thank you very much. There's tour star Shannon O'Keefe. Looking for another player of the year honor back to back, possibly in 2019. Good match here. Bond to go up by 10. Fifth frame yeah. has all 10 back. And Julia Bond, former national champ at Nebraska, has a double. Ball 15 at the arrows, 10-11. Down about 40, 43 feet. That's a good looking shot, Kel. And what's so great, Julia, I love to watch her physical game because every time, I don't think I've ever seen her fall off balance once. She really just posts the shot every single time. Follow through is through her target and her path entirely down the lane. So focused, so dedicated to her craft. Win probability looks pretty good here for Bond. Go up 20. Yes. Left lane. All 10 back. Those pins had no chance as she blisters the rack. And the top seed, Julia Bond Kelly, is looking good. Yeah, Julia finds three in a row, especially finishing on that left lane. Takes a commanding lead right now. A few frames left to go. Who wins? Shannon O'Keefe is here on social media. There's a lot of texting, there's a lot of social stuff. Uh, she, she is the queen selfie out on tour. With four titles this year and 12 for her great career, hoping for another Player of the Year honor in 2019. What a season for Shannon O'Keefe. I'm sure she was updating Facebook and Absolutely. Instagram. And she is a trailblazer when it comes to that, though. She really is very good at it. Bandy down by 20. Got to hurry. A little light hit there and leaves the two. <sighs> So we've seen Kayla mouthing something. The question is, Stephanie, what is she saying? So I had the chance to talk to Kayla during the break, and she highlighted what she's saying is positive vibrational energy. And I asked her, can you explain that? She said, anything I can tell myself to just relax and make a good shot. So that seems to be what comes to mind. Hey, Interesting Stephanie, words. Works. You got to keep it going. And thanks for asking her, <laughs> because we were all wondering. Good match here, seventh frame. 
and that's a good BS point. Head coach, as we talked about. Yeah, and that's a good point to be made. You know, so often enough we do our job and the negativity can come in and just be so discouraged by, by what we leave on the lanes that that positive reinforcement is always good to hear and repeat to yourself. Leads a two. Her team won the MEAC title this year and made the national semifinals. They lost to Stephen F. Austin. And right there with these last few shots, Dave, I have to agree with Stephanie. You know, bigger engine, something with a stronger core, weight block in it, sometimes an asymmetric bowling ball, or something with a stronger cover that's really going to slow down, read that mid lane, and shape more into that smoother banana shape or quarter moon shape. Right now, everything is going a little too long or burning up a little bit too much. Has her mark to keep this match very interesting. Julia Bond looking for four in a row right now. She's four for six in terms of strikes. She's looking to extend her 22 pin lead with four in a row right here. Laser on lane number 16. Focus, Kel. I'll go up by 32 pins. Soon as I say that, ring 10. It was a good shot, ring 10 pin. Yeah, beautiful delivery. Julie right here, look at the intensity within her eyes and where she's focusing on her target. Again, post the shot, doesn't move until the ball is off her hand through her target, and then she sees where the ball is going. Two things you have to look for as a player, you want to see where the ball hits the arrows. That, has, that can tell you if you made a good shot or not. If you hit what you wanted to hit, then you can see the shape off it at the back of the end of the lane. Cross lane, 10 pin, has her mark. And sitting down with Julia pre-match today, pretty serious customer. She's all business, very dedicated to her craft, a forensic science major at Nebraska. So yes, that is the CSI crime scene stuff, but she wants to be in the lab, analyzing the evidence She one did. Day. Member of Team USA, and, and she, she had some uh, opportunities to go to some things, but cool. she wanted to finish school. She stayed in, and her calendar finally freed up, and hence why she was out on tour full time and within the regional program itself. Get in there. Yeah. Wow. All 10 back in the pit. Just shrapnel with 10 back again for Julia Bond. Really has a great look on each lane. Kelly in that one three pocket. Yeah, a much better job of controlling the 1-3 pocket, like you said, Dave, than Kayla Bandy is right now. Just a more direct path, and that allows her, her rotation is what allows it to get the ball down the lane. Almost like where she's standing and just throwing the ball towards a three pin for it to tip up so, so gently into the pocket towards the back end of the pattern. Saw the max scores. Stay, baby, stay. Eight for Bandy, crossing over, almost a Brooklyn strike, leaves the six pin. And the gap is gonna widen here. Way Julia's got command of the pocket. It's going to be tough for Kayla Bandy, the four seed, to make a comeback. Yeah, after going light, light, she squares everything up. It really was a good shot off her hand physically. Everything was good there, but she's way inside that target, the break point there. And unfortunately, she doesn't have the same ball roll as Julia, so the ball does not hold its line as long. Come on, look at that. So here's the instance. If you're left and it comes up light and you go back right and hooks too much, you're in the wrong part of the lane. Probably with the wrong part of the wrong bowling ball as well. So I would say go back left to where she was and make a ball change. Nine spare, nine spare, nine spare, nine spare. But again, two pin combinations, four pin, ten pins. Stay, baby, stay. That shot has it. That was a big topic of the conversation with her this week. Cal about leaving a lot of nine pins, trying to create rotation moving left, synchronizing her shoulders, stabilizing the torso, so many things. As a coach, she works with her bowlers at Maryland Eastern Shore, trying to work with herself and get ready for this showdown. And as you know, the, the coaching execution can be tough sometimes. It can be. There's the parallel. Sometimes it's good. I mean, Shannon, when she's coaching, she's even sharper with her bowling game, yeah. obviously, of course. Sometimes it can backfire because you're telling something to a student you try to incorporate in your game. It may not be the right combination. Julia Bond there, her first really hiccup of the match 
left the 1210. Let's see right here. Eyes, right, ball drops in the swing. Hand comes a little bit wider. Looks like she kind of grabbed at the bottom of a little bit more. And instead of rotating through it, she rotated up it. Kind of really pushed ball down the lane a little bit more. One, two, ten. Oh, yes. Got it. Big spare conversion for Julia Bond. And this late in the match, it's crucial. Watch your hand come through the ball this time. Up through the ball, just like that. Good execution. Last time she kind of just kind of got the elbow outside the swing a little bit. That's the first emotion we've seen from her today. 19 pin fill here for a shutout and a win. Oh, push. You heard her push. Just inside her target again. Again, a sport compliant pattern is about 2.65 to 1, the ratio means. So for every one unit on the outside, there's 2.65 units in the middle. It's not a lot of oil. Always sport challenging. That's what she needs. Has a three pin, has a spare. Julie's been knocking on the door, third place, 2019 U.S. Amateur, runner up at the 2018 U.S. Am. Won that event in 2017. Sixth place at the U.S. Open in 2017. She's been right there on the very cusp. She made Team USA again. Absolutely. Great bowler. Come on, ball. Strike will shut her out. It's a high shot, oh. though. And 3-6 up. Well, looking at Kayla's game so far, nine spare, nine spare, nine spare. She did strike once early on in the match. Last time went high on this lane. She must punch out in order to win. Needs them all. Stay, 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 stay. Yes, There's come one. on. One more. Come on. Positive vibrational energy. You heard the chance to the foul line and release in a perfect shot. Everyone has their own unique methods of how they deal with the energy and the positiveness of everything. Building that mental game, making it stronger each and every week. Has one, needs two more. Come on, gotta go, gotta go. Get in there, go! Bringing 10 Such pin. A it shot. was a great shot. She was right about it. But will fall short of the top seed, Julia Bond. Uh, Exciting match going all the way down to the 10th frame. Julia Bond and Gigi. Championship match will be up next. Two game mm. total pinfall match. Good luck, babe. Go get in your next match, yeah. And Julia Bond will advance to our final match to take on Gigi Mason coming up next. Exciting match that goes down to the 10th frame. And Julia Bond, our top seed from Aurora, Illinois, with two regional titles in 2019, is trying for the showdown win. Here today in Orlando, Florida, she'll take on Gigi Mason. Two game total pinfall match for the win next. Tip for Bond and Mason head to head. Kelly Kulik, championship here at the regional showdown in Orlando, going for the win. Two game total pinfall match. You like that format? I do, I do. It gives the, the worth to the tie, to the win itself. You know, one game, anything can happen in one game, but two pin, two game total pinfall really shows who the who the better athlete is. So, look, 217 to 214, 214 to a four, really close scores. 
Both matches coming down to the 10th frame. Anything's possible with Gigi against Julia. Regional showdown here today in Orlando. Let's talk about the PWA Tour and the road to Richmond, Kelly. Everyone is pointing toward that Old Dominion building and the Richmond Speedway to wrap up the 2019 season. Yeah, again, the X's mean the ladies are automatically in. Missy Parkins had a great season so far. Clara Guerrero up there. Liz Johnson just finished in second last week. You can see the point spread. Danielle McEwen still in running for player of the year, so don't hold it back. Don't hold her back for anything. But here's where it becomes interesting because look how close, 50, 47, 47, 46, 46. Shayna and Sandra, Sandra probably will be back. I believe Shana, uh, Shayna said she's coming back. Anything can happen with the Players' Championship because it is a major and it is double points, higher points for those players advancing. So we could see some flip-flopping going on in the last week ahead. 16 players will advance. Richmond Raceway, again, it's going to be a live telecast here on CBS Sports Network, September 18th, 8 p.m. Eastern. Tickets are still available at pdabba.com. Hashtag Road to Richmond. Can't wait, Kelly, to wrap it up. I'll be broadcasting you on the lanes. Going for a win and a seventh major, Kelly Kulik. Great Hall of Fame bowler, along with Stephanie Johnson and Josie Barnes will try for a title in Richmond. More coming up from Orlando, Florida. All right, Kelly, let's break down the lane conditions this late in our show. Yeah, well, you can see, so Julia Bond is right here. She's going through 15, almost like a direct line to the three pin. Slight left to right there. Gigi is sliding way over here at 35 with her feet. This is what's so unique. She's going 20 all the way just outside of Julia to get the ball back to the pocket. Now, what's interesting is the more hook you have, the more chance of error there could be from the ball itself. Julia has a tighter line to the pocket. But again, it's two games. Transition's gonna happen, total pinfall overall. The friction that Julia's gonna create might be an advantage towards Gigi. Great breakdown, Kel. Final match, we'll get this started. Two games, Dave, two games. Total pinfall, we saw it. Gigi knocked off Elise Bolton by three pins, first semifinal. The final is underway. Has to really hurry yes. up to get to that one three pocket. Leaves a wiggling 10. She's starting exactly where she finished after her first match. Good shot, Jazzy. So I'm looking to see where she's sliding. 34, 20 with the ball at the arrows. 7, 8, 43 feet roughly down the lane. Ringing 10 pin. Tries to wiggle it down, just not enough. That's 10 pin has her mark. When the player rules a 300 game during our telecast, we'll receive a $10,000 bonus courtesy of GoBowling.com. Visit GoBowling.com to find local bowling centers, get tips from the pros, and follow the latest news and information about your favorite sport, bowling. Ten pin win. Bond. Then the other semifinal starts off the final. One, two, eight, ten. Missed the pocket. Yep, wash out with the eight pin. So interesting. You, you both had 15 minutes, 10 minutes of practice, and the lanes can transition right at the end of practice. Holds the balance through, but definitely left. Looks like she just accelerated just a bit much. Nice cover though, the washout. An impressive spare for Julia Bond. It's not easy kill. No, she's ace at these washouts right now. Just hit the head pin to the left. Enough angle, the head pin pushes off to into the 10 pin itself, take it out. Much better. All oh, 10 back. Two-time regional champ this year. I will say this, Gigi has a lot of accessories. She accessorized very well. The earrings, the necklace, everything that matches so well. In charge of her own brand, you said too, Dave. Pretty impressive. 
Only 24 years old. Very active on social media. GG. Oh. Tampan is tapped and wiggles and stands. Tickles it again. Really close. So going back to her story at Nebraska, she got there. Coaches overhauled everything about her approach, her swing, her backswing, you name it. And she almost quit a couple times. <laughs> was crying every day. She came back from practice. Started, as we see that ball in the pocket, leaving the 10, the year, just a couple of fill games. Ended up her freshman year as the leadoff bowler on the national championship team. So she made a huge jump in one season at Nebraska. There's the 10. Yeah, it's so Quick difficult study. within our sport that sometimes you have to go two steps backwards before you take that giant leap forward. And that's where the work and dedication comes into taking into account what your coach is telling you to do, what you're supposed to work on. Yes, it might get worse before it gets better, but the object is heavy. It's larger than your hand. It's going to take a lot to make changes happen. And then spinning it ahead after her career in Nebraska, didn't feel like she was ready. Bowled one event on the tour in East Hartford, close to her home in Providence, didn't do well, and took the rest of the year off just to practice. Basically a full year after graduation to work on her game. Please, thank you. <laughs> Begging for the strike. You just have to say please, Kevin. Yep. You know, another great story, Earl Anthony, the first few years he went on tour, first year he went on tour, he didn't make one cut. Went home, practiced for an entire year, came back, and the rest is history. Begging for a strike right there. Six pin tries to wrap itself around. Kicks it out. Stephanie Johnson talking about Julia. I did speak with Julia, and uh, you know, she does pride herself on her spare game as we've uh, seen today so far. So I would not be surprised if that's going to be what makes the difference in walking away with a win. One of the things we do at Team USA camp with our coaches, Rod Ross, and, and the rest of the staff is we have to go through a spare shooting evaluation. That's seven pins, 10 pins, washouts, the one, two, four, 10, two, eight spares, and the baby split, of course. And occasionally they throw a wrench in it, maybe a bucket or the two, four, five. Three, six. Right, good night. Good night. So to be constantly evaluated every year to see where we stand. And it's great. Just uh, I'm sure Shannon would say her students and Kayla with her students and, and her athletes, one of the things they pride themselves is being really good spare shooters. Josie, her, I'm sure, with her group at Vanderbilt, that's probably one of the strongest things they focus on in their program. She's nodding her head yes very, very hardly there. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a spare conversion attempt, and no worries there for Julia. Total pinfall, two-game match here in the final. Back to GG. Oh, trips four. Got a reaction. Lane bump on that four pin down it goes. Even things up. Is he mowing on? Two ring tens. Carries the next time. Really good shot. Just a touch, touch inside of her target. Trips four pin forward. Each board is an inch and sixteenth wide. So you missed by one board. That's an inch and the sixteenth. And that can make a difference. Hey, there's a future bowler out on the ladies PWBA tour, bowled in the pro -Am events here at Boardwalk Bowl and got to meet all the great bowlers this week, including the stars of this telecast right now. Roll a lot. Yes. Will help. And a 10 pin lead for Jasmine Mason. Well, Gigi really just coming back where she finished off. Remember, she threw the last six in her closing match to win and defeat Elise Boltland. And now, right now, hit the pocket every single shot through the first five frames. Nine spare, nine spare, three bagger. Fifth for Bond works on a spare. Yes. All down.
Julia Bond getting deeper inside. She was around 15, 16. Now she's about 18 at the arrows, still controlling about 11, 12, 40 feet down the lane. Those brown indicator marks. The first one is 34 to 37, and the beginning of the second one is 40 to 43 feet. Always three feet in distance. Majority of the time, that's where the ball is close to getting to that sweet spot and striking. Looks for the double. Looks to even things up. Yes. Do just that. 60 feet to success, and the fans love the strike song, too, because they can make their hands clap. <laughs> <laughs> Great stuff here in Orlando. First game, two game total, pinfall matches underway. Top seed Julie Bond is converting some difficult spares, Kelly, as we check the BPAA moment of the match. A couple of washout spare conversion attempts and two for two. Yeah, ninth frame last match against Kayla Bandy. Perfect execution off the sidewall there for the head pin to kick out the 10. And then again, facing the 1-2-8-10 this time. Needs enough carry to kick out that sleeper in the back and she does exactly the same thing. Shannon O'Keefe was impressed, <laughs> so are we. Resuming this two-game total pinfall match. The final here in Orlando, regional showdown. All even. Six frame, Mason looks for the four-bagger. To go up by 10 pins. Run. That would really hurt to get back to the pockets. And the 10 untouched. Have to applaud her six frames, six very well executed deliveries. Had the three strikes in a row, just could not get the 10 pin to fall down. Plastic ball cross lane for the Tempin. Got it. <laughs> Gigi told us that in that year, and great story about Earl Anthony, by the way. Thank you. Hadn't heard that one. Yeah. Whole year off. But in her year off, trying to build up her game and develop, there are several times she's like, why am I doing this? <laughs> I have a degree from Nebraska. Let's move on with my life. But her parents were very supportive. And told her just to keep going, follow your dream. Worked out well. It, indeed it did. On left lane. Got a push. Coming up high, almost a Brooklyn strike, and a six pin for her. Yeah, this is where we fall into this, kind of like this slot where you're hitting the pocket, you're hitting the pocket, ring 10, ring 10, you, make, you try to make it strike. That's when you grab the ball a little bit more, rotate a little bit quicker, and the ball is just left off your hand, doesn't project quite as far right down lane. It's a good break. It's only a six pin. Sometimes you just can't make the ball strike. You can't. It's, we've tried, and you just can't do it. Whoa. <laughs> just a tap, but that's enough. Wait, do you, do you think that's a move on the left? Because I wasn't sure if the weak ten, if that was like a move, just stay where I am. Just speed up, left on the right lane. And just the pins, by the way, you gotta keep chasing. Left 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 left. Okay, got it. Julia, frame number seven. <laughs> Julia, she Good catches nice. three in a row. Got, yeah, it's uh, the characteristics of this building right now in lane number fifteen is keep chasing it left. So that means move inward to a higher number board. Maybe a three-in-one move, increase the angle with your feet. Wow, just I said a huge move. That was about 21 at the arrows. Not sure if she made a move off the last shot when she went flush last time. But definitely now in the same zone as Gigi Mason. That's a big change. It is. Look, she's sliding 32. That was 21 to 12, 13. 12, 13. Gigi's still trying to get the ball over here. That's more than a ball's, a bowling ball's radi uh, full diameter around. 
The width of the bowling ball. 2-5. Tricky cover here. Takes care of the 2-5 and the mark. Let's go back to Stephanie. I just spoke with the ball reps, and it appears, obviously, the lanes are transitioning pretty quickly. Um, he mentioned the right lane is a little tighter down lane, so they're going to soften up their ball speed, both players, and also the left lane almost make a zone change left because it's just hooking super early. So I really believe we're going to see some bowl changes here pretty quickly. Steph, thanks. Here's Gigi again. That's Stay got out. really hurry. Okay. A light hit and the one, two, eight. Yeah, target to the ball rep. The right lane could be a little bit softer because it's tighter down lane. She was really hitting the pocket. So, again, you, you don't want to make the ball carry. You just want to be a little bit more patient, allow it to come to you. As Stephanie mentioned, it could be same part of the lane with a different ball. So it just enters the, the pin deck and the pocket just slightly different enough to carry all 10 pins. One, two, eight spare. No problem. Covers nicely. There's former collegiate teammates at Nebraska. They know each other's game very well. Pretty cool setup here in the final in Orlando to match up with each other. Stat pack shows us the breakdown. Zero opens, big key. You heard her, folks. Skid, I mean push, get down the lane. That was a really good move. After trying to make the ball carry last time, left arm out to the side. Beautiful clean release. Great axis rotation and perfect camera angle. Thank you, guys. Watch the ball almost like it's still going towards the seven pin. Got a great match here. Each ratcheting their game up. Last game yes. of game one, all 10 down for Julia. And here's that strike song. Yeah, Dave, only 13 pins difference. I just want to clap. I do too. Can we clap too? I line dance this song too, by the way. Yeah, 174, 234 max score for Gigi Mason, 247 for Julia. Remember, it's a two game total pinfall match. Only nine frames in for both players. 10th frame coming up. It's a good shot. Yes. Crumbles the pocket, Dave. Look right here. Sliding 31, 21 at the arrows. Again, 12, 13. Now, Julia's ball roll doesn't make her angle open quite as much, so she's able to feed the ball to the pocket. The pocket's board 17, folks, back home. So if you're getting the ball to 12, 13, you're just three to four boards, four or five boards away from that one, three pocket. Push. Push! For a yeah. push, getting it. How about, Julia strikes again. How about push for flush? Let's clap. <laughs> you have to after a while. I just gotta you get do. into it. Yeah. <laughs> Up by 33 pins, game one. And our two game total pinfall max, the final here in Orlando, Boardwalk Bowl, our PWBA Regional Showdown. Great bowlers on display. Ball change here just for information. That looks pretty good too. Good info. And everyone's clapping again. 247. Kelly Kulik, impressive game. It is, it is. After the scores were earlier 2 0 teen. Some friction was built in by the players. GG Mason really only one bad shot of the whole match on that seven count. She needs to uh, see what she will gather here in the 10th frame. Can she strike out, close up that gap between her and Julia Bond? Really important total pinfall match. It's not a fresh game. In game two, it's total pinfall. So every shot's important like that one. It answers the call. Yeah. 
different strikes on for Gigi. It's all good. So Gigi told us yesterday that she spoke with you after her trial at the East Hartford event where things just weren't going well. That's when she took her year off and she, she spoke, I'm not sure you remember that conversation, but she said basically Kelly help. <laughs> She's trying to seek advice from me, as many bowlers do. Yeah. To try to straighten things out. I'm not sure if you recall, but basically she realized I'm not ready for this. Yeah, I think I think Gigi physically has the game. She's developed it really, really well. She's bowled team trials in, in January when she's trying out for Team USA and had some success there and everything. Junior gold as well. Nebraska, great outstanding program there. But uh, it's some. It's not for everybody. It's it's travel schedules demanding. It's a quick flight in, a, a quick flight out, long days on Fridays and Saturdays. And um, I think she had to go home, kind of get herself more comfortable and be ready to be out here and commit herself full time. And that's exactly what she did. Look for another one here. Good shot. Way to close up that gap though. 233 score, 247 for Julie Bond. Only a 13 pin difference after game number one. So high scores being seen here. Impressive. Nice finish there for GG to wrap up game one in the two game total pinfall match from Orlando. Our final of the regional showdown on CBS Sports Network. Game two coming up next will determine the winner of this event. Right around the corner. Boy Rock Born Orlando. Hey, Brian Kelly Kewitt, Stephanie Johnson, our entire CBS Sports Network bowling crew here in Orlando to watch game two of this total pinfall match. Top seed Julia Bond, former star at Nebraska, against the two seed Gigi Mason, former star at Nebraska, ex-teammates in college. A couple national champs. Going head to head again. Okay. Could have been worse. 6-10 <laughs> standing there for Bond. Yeah, watching Julia shot on that one. After coming off that clutch 247 game, she makes a ball change that she finished within the 10th frame, which did look really, really good. Just high on that shot right there, 6-10. Total pinfall in this two game match. So that score you see is the cumulative two game score. Now that we're in a game two, chop and a 10 pin stand. So it's an open, which will affect the number, as you can see, drastically. Now the player rolls a 300 game during our telecast. We'll receive a $10,000 bonus courtesy of GoBowling.com. Visit GoBowling.com to find local bowling centers, get tips from the pros, and for all the latest news and information about your favorite sport, bowling. Let's see if Jasmine can take yes. advantage of the open and does so to begin the game. Both ladies make that ball change on the fill ball in the 10th, and both ladies sticking with the change. Gigi Mason, same, another symmetrical bowling ball, really aggressive, pearlized cover. Basically the same part of the lane she was bowling with earlier. See if she's down. She was down by 14 pins starting on this match before Julia's opening frame. Now only down by three. But sticking with the other bowling ball on the left lane. Two ball game for her. Fourteen pin difference after game one. Double Ooh. wood two eight. Almost a two eight ten on that too. Is it an advantage for either bowler, or is it kind of just even keel on the fact that they know each other so well? Bowl against each other, competing in college, trying for a positioning in the the Baker format at Nebraska. What do you think? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I would think that just right now, both girls, because it's their first time on national TV, they're just really trying to bowl the pins. Neither one is concerned with what the other one's doing. It's they want to be lined up to that pocket and just putting as many X on the board as they possibly can. Let's go back to Stephanie. Yeah, basically to echo what Kelly's saying, you know, at the end of the day, both of these girls want to win. They're going to put everything on the line and put their friendship aside just for now. And like Kelly said, they're just going to bowl the pins. I'm with you, Steph. Yeah, I can't That'd control what you're doing. Still, for if sure. you know each other so well. 
But the thing of it, at the end of the day, somebody's got to win. Don't you want to be you? <laughs> that would be my answer, so yeah. Yeah, off target there. Missed that one through pocket by a hair. But only the single pin spare conversion to deal with here for Julia. Yeah, very close total pinfall match. Ball looked really good on the fill ball in the 10th frame, but for the first two opening shots right now, I'm not quite sure that's a change. Covers no problem. Julie really was 11 years old in Chicago land, and her dad was invited to be a sub in a bowling league at a local center. And he didn't really know much about bowling, wasn't into it at all. Got a ball, bought some shoes so he could feel a little more official joining his team. And Julia tagged along and just loved the game from the very first time she saw it. And she told us she was hooked. Worked out pretty well with Dab. Took that sub spot in the local bowling league. All 10 back for the young star out of Aurora, Illinois. We have Gigi coming up next. So I'm looking where she's sliding. She's 33, 19 at the arrows, eight that whiteboard, two boards right of the indicator. Left lane, so 32, she's now sliding uh, 33, 34, 19, 20. Almost the same exact spot, just a little bit further down the lane, but again, she's rolling two different balls. Pearlized ball on the right lane, a solid ball on the left lane. Uh-oh, get well, back. It didn't. One, two, eight, ten. A little quick with the feet, balls in the swing fast, chased it, off to the right. Time she had a little pause in her approach where she's getting the ball in the swing and just walking after it. That time it looked like she hesitated with her second step of the right foot. We've seen some good washout conversions. From Julia Bond. Pick it up. Bond for GG. Yes! You bet. Very late on number 10, but down it goes. It's a clinic count. It is, Dave. Early on, both ladies missed some, some easy spares to you in the first match. But the washout, it, um, not that it should be a routine spare, Dave, but it commonly when on the difficult sport patterns, it does become something you have to shoot at more frequently. So the ladies do practice it. The 1, 2, 4, 10, and in this case, the 1, 2, 8, 10, and occasionally the 2, 4, 10. Third in points among rookies. Trying for rookie of the year. Got to get up the hill. Not enough. Just accelerating a bit at the bottom of the swing. So as you start to migrate left, you're covering more lane because the ball is traveling further away from the pocket to get back to it. And usually what happens is the women try to accelerate a little bit more with their legs. And when you do, the ball just does not slow down enough. You can see she's been roughly about eight. So she's another two or three boards to the right of where she was and an extra one or two feet down the lane. This is the 278 spare. Not an easy conversion, Dave. Has to slide behind the two pin, the sleeper, to take out the seven pin. Let's see what Judy's got in mind here. Covers nicely. We have seen some really good challenging spare conversions. Yeah, that one, no hesitation in her footwork there. Really good spare, not an easy spare to make. That needs help. Solid five pin. I'm just not quite sure the ball change was the right thing to go to. This is just only my personal opinion, or it, it happens occasionally, but I think the further left you go with an asymmetric bowling ball, it slows down even more. Sometimes that's good to stabilize the mid lane, but also enough when it starts to see friction, it will change direction quickly and respond to it faster. Doesn't give you quite as much hold. Missed the spare. Shocker. And she's down by two pins, just like that. 
Yeah, tough. Uh, it's not a tough spare, it's a pocket spare. Yeah, Kelly, I, I can totally agree with you that oftentimes when we make a ball change in the fill ball in a game before and it's a great shot, it's almost misleading and we, we feel like that's probably the right move when I would have to agree with you. I, I don't think that probably is uh, what she's thinking right now. Yeah, she's really only had one good shot in the left lane. This might be it. Here, swishy strike there, but some transition step is happening on the right lane. I don't know, 240, make a ball change. I would have started with the same ball I end it with and then see what happened and, and possibly go to it. That would that be a little a really more. interesting move at the end of that first game. Yeah, well, you always gain information from throwing mm -hmm. the fill ball, but more often enough, because even though you're on the same pair, I, I would have started, again, a 240 game was a great game. I would have started with the other ball that she was using, given a shot on each frame, each lane, and then if I saw something different, then make the ball change. Again, nine is good. And these are young bowlers. As what you said, perfect spare, example. Fifth frame, yep. Stop. Yes. It does stop. So Kelly, that's something they will learn, right? They go exactly. The ball change. Exactly, for sure. It's just that again, 23, 24 years old, gaining that experience and knowledge. Got some dancers off there to the left. Hey, you guys, line dance. Good shot here, though. Backed up by Gigi, though. College bowling is is unique because you have. The Josie Barnes. You had the Shannon O'Keefe's to rely on them to give. Did I hit the pocket? No. Then you make a change. Two four ten. So two big explosive scores by both ladies, and all of a sudden we're seeing a lot of miscalculations. Twenty one. Ball is sailing. So I'm looking. See the yellow color on the ball right there? Kind of like the ball is standing up and trying to roll forward already, and by doing so, it's depleted all its energy. Nothing left. Deeper, that would be a ball change for me from that. A cleaner cover and deeper. 2 4 10. Tough pick up here for the spare. Not this time. So, an open frame in game two of our total pinball match from Orlando Regional Showdown Final. We'll wrap it up. Declare a winner next on CBS Sports Network. Love the artwork. Thank you. Those guys are really dancing well. As I taught him everything. In the break a moment ago. Leads by 12 frames, even missing that five pin. Julie Bond needs to bounce back right now in the sixth frame. Looking for a double. Looking to go up by 22. <laughs> Will do just that. Julia Bond, big shot after the commercial break. Now, I don't mind that ball's reaction on the right lane, but the left lane. It hasn't paid out for her yet, so I really think something cleaner, something higher RG, you know, that means a taller core, something that's going to get down the lane even longer and transition later. That's what higher RG means, longer and later. Not so much like a hockey stick, but very similar to that reaction. I like that. Good analogy. 22 pin lead here and a total pinfall total. That's the number you see right next to Julia's name. That's the updated score of the two games. Let's go by 32. Makes a big move, sees it. Catches the double for Julia Bond. Actually three in a row after the left lane. Sliding 33, 23 at the arrow is really almost like a fallback shot, Dave. Not as much oil, but really just kind of pushing the ball towards the three pin. Maybe just right of the three pin so it tips up and rolls forward through that pocket. Turkey for Bond, she struck for the last five frames. Breakdown for Gigi. It's got to push. Got to push. Comes in high. Oh, splitting six, seven, again. Six, seven, ten. Difficult conversion. It really is, Dave. Yeah, I love Gigi's rotation off her hand. It's really clean, but sometimes being the hook player, it's just detrimental sometimes because you have to cover so much of the lane. And if you miss a little bit inward, the ball will not hold. It's a flatter pattern, only 37 feet that we said early on. And means there's 23 feet left to lane. 60 feet to the head pin. Leads open frame. That opens in the seventh frame. She's just gonna make a ball change right here too. Wow, look at that score all of a sudden. Blooms the 43 pins. Yeah. The total pinfall two game match was 14 pin difference. 247, 233 after the first game. 13 pins. 
And you give credit to both these ladies. Again, they bowled on different patterns, sport challenge patterns, according to our tour, our tour um, master, Tenille Milligan, of course, and uh, different patterns each time. The ladies just saw this pattern for an hour prior to the beginning of the TV telecast. Light 10 pin. Time's running out. It is, Dave, very quickly. Julia Bond is closing in on the win now. She's won two regional titles this year. This is the showdown. Wrapping up some great bowling on the PWBA regional tour for the four finalists here. Cross length with a 10 pin does have the mark. That's a big hole she's dug, so unfortunately. I just, I just threw the emeralds. I just wanted to see something different. I don't really know. I've <laughs> well, <laughs> we were expecting the emeralds to come off at the same time. That's hard because there's not enough core. So it's going to be smoothing down there in the back. You're going to keep it closer to the pocket. Right? The breakpoint's got to be a little bit further. <laughs> Four pin for Julia as Gigi gets advice. She's so cute. I'm not really sure what I was asking and what Mike Devaney, who is the tour rep out here for, for Storm Bowling Products, said. It's not enough core. So the engine, it's a smoother engine. It's, it's not going to want to, it's going to slow down even sooner. It's a lower RG ball. It's not going to want to push down the lane. Again, that higher RG level, those numbers. Think of a pencil, really tall, rolling end over end as it lopes. So you turn it, that's what pushes the ball down the lane. That's what you're looking for. Four pin to Mark and a 42 pin lead. Let's break down the left and the right lane. At 50% on the right. Foundation frame time, second game, and Julia is cruising. Looking for the win. Looks good. Lane. Oh. Seven pin stands. Pretty good shot. So close. This is what happens with the women as we start to get deeper and deeper. We're really trying to push the ball towards the pocket, and then there's just not enough shape for the ball. Kind of like it's still trying to hook back to the pocket there. Just not enough shape for it to roll through the pocket and carry. Now, there is that pocket hit where you catch the light swishers. That does be beneficial for some players. Just need a little bit more shape. Converts to seven pin. GG Mason though, any chance of survival? She needs to strike here in the ninth frame, Dave. Any chance at all. Down by 41 pins, two frames left to go. Must, must strike situation. Has not struck since the fifth frame. And ran into big trouble in the sixth and seventh. Down 41, needs a strike. Nice frame. That's crossing over Brooklyn. And she will gladly take it. Some crucial numbers going on right now. If Gigi does strike out, if she does strike out, she can shoot 188. A nine open for Julia Bond, and she would lose by one. That's what my mathematician brain is trying to tell me right now. So, all depends on what Gigi does right here, right now. Needs another strike and gets another strike to keep things interesting. Yeah, down one, the stretch. 188. If she strikes out. Good shot, guys. I think Julia would just have to get some big count in the 10th frame, but again, Gigi holds her fate right now. 188 max score. 205 for Julia. She would just need some good count if Gigi strikes out. How about another one for Gigi? Wow. 
She gets it, Dave. Tap on the 10, down it goes. And this great finish continues for Mason. I thought this was over, Kelly. I thought so too. <laughs> but Julia will just need to count. Gigi for 188, 187. So Julia Bond most likely would just need four, five pins to wrap up this PWA regional win. Jasmine, Gigi Mason, impressive. Bowling down the stretch to make things interesting for a few moments there, needed that last strike. And Julia Pond needs five, we'll get 10, and we'll get a win. Great bowling, Julia Pond from Aurora, Illinois, our top seed, will get the win at the PWBA Regional Showdown here in Orlando. Been fun to watch these great bowlers, Kel. The future of the sport taking center stage today here on CBS Sports Network. That's it. Go bowling. PWBA Regional Showdown winner is Julia Bond. The top seed with a couple regional titles this year. Wraps up the season as the showdown victor as well. Some great bowling at Boardwalk Bowl. Here in Orlando, we'll hear from the winner right after this on CBS Sports Network. Florida, great bowling for the top seed, Julia Bond, and time to raise that trophy as the regional showdown winner, now joined by Stephanie Johnson for the post-tournament presentation. Thanks, guys. I'm here with general manager of Boardwalk Bowl, Jennifer Halpern, to say a few words and present the championship trophy. Yes, on behalf of Boardwalk Bowl, we would like to congratulate you on your big win tonight. Thank you. All right, Julia, congratulations first and foremost. Who would you like to thank tonight? First of all, I'd like to thank GoBowling.com for this awesome event and this great opportunity. So this is your first PWBA debut. You're walking away with a win as the Regional Showdown champion. How do you think today's experience is going to jumpstart your PWBA career? Um, I think this is going to jumpstart my career because at the you know beginning of the season they explained that the regionals were kind of a nice confidence boost and I think that that's what that happened for me today. I think going forward this once again shows that I can be in the lights and be on the stage and um, make shots when I need to and have an opportunity to win and I hope that carries on for the rest of my PWBA career. Well again, congratulations. Great bowling today. Back to you guys. Stephanie, thanks so much. Great polling from Julia Bond, our winner here in Orlando. The PWBA returns to CBS Sports Network on Sunday, September 7th at 4 Eastern for the PWBA Players' Championship, a major title at stake. Now for Kelly Buick and Stephanie Johnson and the entire CBS Sports Network crew, it's Dave Ryan saying so long from Orlando, Florida. It's been a presentation.